Mao didn't want to acknowledge his failure, partly because he had never failed. You know, he was a brilliant leader. He was a brilliant mobilizer. He mobilized the Chinese people. The communist is a very charismatic person. So he didn't want to acknowledge his mistake, and he told his colleagues, as a result, this was as a result of unthorough revolution, that you didn't carry out the Soviet model to its every details. So in other words, what we should do is not to change policy, not U-turn, not to change back to sort of more pragmatic policies, but to carry the revolution to the end, in his words. This is the dawn, he even said, of communist utopia. I think most of you would realize that he was going mad. That how could you say 40 million people died and you say it's because the revolution was not thorough, that you didn't carry out to every details. But anyways, and he even called Deng Xiaoping a capitalist roader. You know, you're going on down the road of capitalism. So in other words, this was a, a struggle between Mao who I call, and you can take that word, fundamentalist. Mao was a fundamentalist communist. He wanted to carry out the theory of communism to its detail, to its minute. No, this is the way we do things, nationalize things. And if you fail, that's because you didn't do a good job. And the more pragmatic communists, like Deng Xiaoping, right? Say, okay, we, we, we are in China, we control China, we just should have a policy that works doesn't matter what kind of policy, right? doesn't matter. So you, you can say the Cultural Revolution, the origins of the Cultural Revolution was a struggle between fundamentalist communists and more pragmatic faction of the Communist Party. But if you look at the two people, Mao and Deng, you should see there's a huge difference between them. Mao was rural from a peasant household, very left-wing. Deng Xiaoping came from a bourgeois little middle-class family whose family afforded him to study in France <laughs> in the late 1910s and 1920s. These are left-wing bourgeoisies. They are couch communists, you know, couch Marxist, we, we call that. They, they, they believe in the theory, but they may not do things like that. So this is a huge difference makeup in the Communist Party. Um, they represented these two. You must see that, because that without that, you, you won't understand the, the thing. So it's the struggle between more fundamentalists and people who are left-wing, <laughs> left-leaning, but not precisely communist in many ways. And this continues today, by the way, if you want to understand uh, communist China. So this is the struggle, and Mao knew he was losing control, basically. He was losing the trust of his colleagues, and he was losing the trust of the country, of the people, you know, who had suffered. Now, he was in his 70s now, and he truly believed, maybe, we don't know, he maybe truly believed that this was because the revolution was not carried to the end, and he thought he had not many years left, and he should use the left of his years to carry the revolution to the end. Now, his colleagues didn't quite trust him, the adults who had suffered from his policy wouldn't trust him. And if he needed to mobilize the people again, who would he choose? Who, who, who would he still have? And you need to tell me, <laughs> if you were in my classroom, that Mao, who Mao could you know, mobilize in this war against capitalism. Because capitalism, in this sense, also implied imperialism, right? Because it's Britain and America. So naturally... He was rebel in his adolescence days. He mobilized the youth. It's a bit much like today's, uh, you know, terrorists who would recruit teenagers who got stuck with an idea and would die for that idea. So Mao called on the youth of the country to take up the responsibility of carrying the revolution to the end. He received them in in uh, eight times alone in 1966, he stood on Tiananmen Square as thousands of them thugged, you know, thugged to, to, to meet him, to see the Messiah, basically. They cried. It's like they saw Michael Jackson. They cried. I mean, I couldn't understand that. When I saw people thugging to see Michael Jackson and cry, I understood what the Red Gods, because I was too small at that time. So they... People would journey thousands of miles from countryside of China, from anywhere, go to Beijing and get a glimpse of him, and then go back to their localities to carry the revolution to the end. So Mao's message to them is the older generation are feudal. They want to go to the capitalist road, and that's wrong. And we want to, 
to make China a, a utopia. And you're the only one who can do that because you are the morning sun. You're the sun in the morning. Um, you can carry out, and your job is to rebel, to destroy the, the feudal elements, you know, the bourgeois, the capitalist elements of China, and you are the red gods. That's the where the famous phrase and people came from. It's like a cult. You're the red gods because you're the guardian of the revolution. You're going to guard this revolution. And you can imagine how the kids were fired up. Finally, they have a cause. You know, without a cause, they rebel, right? Normally, and now they have a cause. And you can, you can imagine what happened to China. They stopped going to school. There's no need for school. We're the guardians of the revolution. They traveled around the country. They smat. What they would do is they smashed old buildings, like temples, Buddhist temples, because that's old. That's feudal. And Chairman Mao said that. And you can imagine in the local community, if they do that, the local people will say, no, 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 you can't do that. And you can imagine the civil strife that came along because old people, older or even younger people, just say, no, it's not right to do, to do this. So they smashed old buildings, old shops. My, my family's uh, tea shops were smashed. One of the things they destroyed, because my mother was a musician, was pianos. They sought after pianos because piano was a bourgeois element, a capitalist foreign element and old. So they sought out piano, destroyed so many pianos. And they ridiculed people from a different era, from old days, like my grandmother, whose feet were bound. So she walked very slowly and gingerly. Because those people are still alive in the 1960s. Anyways, so that's what they did. You know how long they did that for? They had so much fun, if you, if you will, for 10 years. This was what, what we call the lost generation. That generation didn't go to school, didn't go to university, and they just roamed around the country. Like today, you would say antisocial. And they would beat you up. You know, if you, if you, you say that what you're doing is wrong, if you challenge them, they will beat you up. And I was a kid. <laughs> I was so scared of them, red cards. <laughs>